This is the anniversary of the day when Australian and New Zealand soldiers landed on Gallipoli in 1915 as part of the Allies' invasion. Anzac Day is a time for Australians to recognise the more than 1.5 million servicemen and women who have served our country in all conflicts, wars and peacekeeping operations. It's also a time to remember the more than 102,000 Australians who have sacrificed their lives in our country's name. I'm very conscious that many of the young soldiers were no older than you are now. Some were not even as old. This year also marks the 75th commemoration of the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These explosions wiped out 90% of the cities and immediately killed 120,000 people. Tens of thousands more would later die of radiation exposure. The bombs were dropped on civilian populations in Japan. We'll mark this significant event in the hope that nuclear weapons will never again be used, and especially not on a civilian population, and we'll do this once we return to the college. It is important that we commemorate this day to remember those who have served and those who have fallen, as well that we might avoid any such conflict again. There are still wars being waged today, and we pray that we may no peace in the world in our lifetime. Thank you for joining us as a community today and thank you to our college student leadership who will lead us today. I encourage all to commemorate tomorrow by joining the driveway dawn parade, lest we forget. 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 On this anniversary of the landing of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps troops at Gallipoli, we commemorate the event with a special sadness because, for the first time, the men who made that fateful landing on the 25th of April 1915 are all but gone. Tomorrow we will mark the anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli. Like hundreds of thousands of our fellow citizens, we will gather at memorials in cities, suburbs and towns across Australia. We have come here to commemorate one of the most significant events in our national calendar. Time dims the memory of ordinary events, but not great events. In a nation's history, great events, whether in peace or war, live in our memories regardless of time. They are deemed great not necessarily for what they achieved, nor for whether they are victories or success. Today as a college, we will remember and pay respects to not only those who made it the faithful landing at Gallipoli, but to all those who have been and continue to be affected by war. The meaning of Anzac Day. When war broke out, Australia had only been a Commonwealth for 13 years. The new national government was eager to establish its reputation among the nations of the world. In 1915, Australia and New Zealand soldiers formed part of the Allied expedition set out to capture the Gallipoli Peninsula in order to open the Dardanelles to the Allied navies. The Australian and New Zealand forces landed on Gallipoli on the 25th of April, meeting fierce resistance. What had been planned as a bold strike to knock Turkey out of the war quickly became a stalemate and the campaign would drag on for 18 months. At the end of 1915, the Allied forces were evacuated after both had suffered heavy casualties and endured many great hardships. Over 8,000 Australian soldiers had been killed. News of the landing on Gallipoli had made a profound impact on Australians at home. April 25th soon became the day on which Australians remember the sacrifices of those who had died in the war. Although the Gallipoli campaign failed in its military objectives, the Australian and New Zealand actions during the campaign left us all a powerful legacy. The creation of what became known as the Anzac Legend became an important part of the identity of both nations shaping the way they view their past and their present. Rachel will now lead us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, today we pray in thanksgiving for those who served in the armed forces during times of war. We pray especially for those who made the supreme sacrifice for us by giving up their lives in defence of their country. We pray that the offering of their lives may not be in vain. Today, 
We dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace. And we pray for the wisdom and strength to build a better world. We make this prayer through the Prince of Peace, Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Solemn the drums thrill, death august and royal, sing sorrow up into immortal spheres. There is a music in the midst of desolation, and a glory that shines upon our tears. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eyes, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will now listen to the playing of the last post. Observe a minute's silence for those who gave their lives for our country. This will be followed by the reveille. The last post is one of a number of bugle calls in military tradition that marks the phases of the day. While Reveille signals the start of a soldier's day, the last post signals its end. Reveille, from the French word Revelier, meaning to wake up, was originally played as a drum beat just prior to daybreak. It was a call that was used to wake the sleeping soldiers and send them to their duties, the battlefield. <laughs>
poem in Flanders Fields was written by Major John McRae, who was a Canadian medical corps doctor. In it, he expresses his anguish at the loss of one of his friends during war and at his friend's burial at the cemetery outside of his dressing station. The poem, written in 1915, is an evocative encapsulation of the horrors of trench warfare and has since become one of the most famous war poems. In Flanders Fields, Poppies Blow. Between the crosses, row on row, that marked our place and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, fell dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie. In Flanders fields, take up our quarrel with the foe. The torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us, who die? We shall not sleep, though poppies grow. In Flanders fields.